Oskar Panitzer was a German physician, writer and poet who got imprisoned for breaking blasphemy laws and spent his last 16 years of his life in an insane asylum. The son of a Catholic hotel owner and of a strict Protestant mother, the father was reckless and the mother highly devout. Following his father's death, Panitzer's mother tried to raise him as a Protestant despite him being baptized as a Catholic, allegedly hiding the children with her relatives to hide them away from the Catholic Church. Panitza supposedly portrays his mother and her belligerent persons in a short story, The Gelbe Kröte, a short story of a man aboard a cruise ship who sees a huge, garishly painted yellow ship with his own dead mother aboard. Panitza, uh, in the course of his education, was sent to the UK in Paris in order to perfect his language skills, which is where he began to write poetry. His first collection of uh, fiction, Dämmerungsstücke, was published in 1890. The collection contains four stories. The Svachsigurn Svach Kabinett describes a man going to see the story of Jesus' betrayal and crucifixion played out on stage by automated puppets with wax faces. Though nothing really happens, it is an atmospheric little to read and the second best story of the collection. On the other hand, Dimension Fabrik is the worst, being basically just a long misunderstanding where a man accidentally wanders into a porcelain statue factory and mistakes nearly thinks that uh, the factory makes artificial humans and then has a long philosophical ethical debate with the director who surprisingly enough never notices the misunderstanding while defending the ethical nature of his business. Der Stationsberg would be an okay story if it were not for the fact it is basically the repeat of the Wachsfiguren cabinet, only the story of Jesus' end is portrayed by random unexplained tiny people suddenly appearing in front of the narrator. Eine Mondgeschichte is the best story of the collection and by far one of the best of Panitzer's short stories, and also is an anomaly in that there is a lot of action going on in the story plot-wise. In the middle of a Dutch field, the protagonist stumbles upon a ladder hanging out from the middle of the sky. He sees a man climbing in this ladder, carrying a bunch of cheese wheels, and he follows him all the way to the moon. Here he's st the stupefied protagonist finds a small house inhabited by a family of moon people, the man, his fat wife and their daughters, for whose sake the eponymous moon man goes down to earth to steal cheese wheels so he can throw them in their cellar. It is long but it's really entertaining and written in Paninsa's traditional way of writing when dealing with the fantastic. Fantastical things simply happen and we just have to deal with it. No explanations are really necessary or even attempted. Three years later, in 1883, Panitza published Visionen, Skizzen und Erzählungen, this time containing a whole ten stories. Upon reading this book, it becomes apparent that Panitza's fiction is mainly to be categorized into two categories. Stories where the narrator passively watches something happen and does not get involved, and ones where the narrator gets things told to them passively. There isn't much action in a typical Panitza tale, his earlier Mondgeschichte being an exception. This book also contains several repeats and parallels in the writing. Panitza here repeatedly draws upon, for example, doctors or medical students as characters, protagonists, uh, seemingly drawing from his own experiences. Ein Kriminelles Geschlecht, one of the less good tales of the collection, is kind of a damp squib where a doctor gets told at length about this massive conspiracy uh, from a local police chief that was just installed in the recently conquered city of Strasbourg, a conspiracy that, that somehow threatens the ability of those affected to fulfill their marital obligations, and in the end it turns out that all, all this just refers to a bunch of prostitutes. The Kirche von Zinsblech uh, has a wanderer find his way into a church where he sees visions or, man, or uh, manifestations of characters going about in the middle of the night, such as a uh, priest with a tail offering people beer, another man ripping out coin-sized chunks of his own flesh and offering them, them for, to people to eat, a woman marching up and down and in front of the altar with a sword, and others. The man, after a while, gets freaked out and leaves, and then he later finds out the mayor blames him for damages done to the church and uh, puts an ad wanting to identify and blame him in the newspaper. The Operierte Jude, and I'm going to have to say this because that's the name of the book and it's the sign of the times, this was published in 1883 after all, 
a ne eine Negergeschichte. Our stories would may be considered prejudiced against Jews and black people, possibly. However, this comes down to not an outright hatred of any races, but a sort of weirdly stereotyped writing. Both of these have this same theme of passing. The first deals with a disfigured Jew's failed attempts to be able to pass as a German, and the latter deals with a black man from Sudan who looks at himself in the water so long until he convinces himself that he somehow became white through sheer force of will. The premise here is a bit weird because the admittedly insane black person, insane due to the fact he later gets captured and returned to the insane asylum from which he escaped, apparently, this um, black person talks about how he didn't know he was black because the great spirit, quote-unquote, prohibits uh, him and his tribe slash people from looking at themselves in the water. And that kind of doesn't work when, okay, did this person just never look at his own hands or see anyone else from his entire tribe? That's a weird thing, and I'm... I don't know if I should excuse this on the grounds that the person saying this is insane or if that's just a, a lazy way out due to a really kind of odd premise. Now, Indiana Gedanken is similar in that it has a doctor being approached by a foreigner or a non-Caucasian foreigner to be exact and it has um, a Sioux claiming that the Sioux, along with several other tribes, are actively so oppressed by the white man that they are working towards exterminating themselves en masse, going so far as to killing all the children when born to them for the, last, for the past several years, while trying to convince the white doctor to give them strong enough poisons to be able to exterminate their entire her tribe. Uh, Der Goldregen is another of Panisa's stories where the fantastical just sort of happens, and also another one where the narrator just sort of stands in the background and looks at things happening and doesn't really get involved. Basically, gold suddenly starts to rain from the sky, and it starts to break things and physically injure people as it falls, and eventually... It ends with the king and company riding into town, claiming half of the gold for themselves, but eventually the money starts becoming worthless by the end of the story, so that a fat lot of good that may do them in the end. Ein Kapitel aus der Pastoralmedizin is a story of a rather clueless and disoriented priest who preaches to a bunch of uh, students about how if uh, we make it so that people's clothes grow into their own skin so they can never be removed, then there won't be sex anymore. And narrates the story of how, apparently at one point in France, a woman gave birth to a child dressed uh, in a suit and, and top hat. And Scandalusa Fall is a lengthy story of a shocking affair at a female convent school where two girls are found in bed together and it eventually results in the discovery that one of them is a hermaphrodite. Das Wirthaus der, uh, zur Dreifalt Dreifaltigkeit <coughs> is the second best story of the collection and details a man entering an obscure guest house where an old Jew is being manipulated by the girl he took in at 14, uh, the girl claiming that her son was fathered by some sort of supernatural being made out of light and, and not by a man, and while they also go on about how they just sort of have a man locked in the stables for no good reason, just because he made fun of them. Finally, Der Korsettenfritz is probably the best story in this collection. A heavily sheltered theology student somehow grows up not knowing that women have breasts and assumes that um, the, plastic, uh, the plastic dolls and figurines in, in clothes shops or specifically their, uh, their torsos used to display clothes, are actually the uh, mutilated torsos of heavenly fairy beings that get butchered and that uh, then get worn by women for whatever reason under their clothes. 
He continues to compliment himself on how just how clever he is, and that he's the only man that ever found out about this really big, massive conspiracy, and um, and he somehow grows up, remaining completely unaware about sex while attending an all boys school with a bunch of other teenage boys. This story continues to explore his persistent delusion, including the fact that uh, upon being taken to a to a bordello, he still doesn't even understand what the point of uh, of a bordello is to begin with, and it ends with his um, snapping and uh, becoming completely insane while trying to deliver a sermon uh, at his father's church, eventually leading him to be locked up in an insane asylum and being told by the doctor to write out down his life story, which is uh, how this manuscript was supposedly written in the first place. Panitza's collections were apparently not successful. One of the reasons Hans Heinz Evers implies in a subsequent uh, for, uh, epilogue he writes about Panitza is that uh, not since Luther did a German poet so misuse their language as did Panitza. Two years uh, after Vision and Panitza did publish a book that would give him some renown infamy, the Liebes Conceal, a play about how a senile god makes a slutty Mary conspire with the devil to invent syphilis to punish mankind for being uh, too promiscuous. Panitza was immediately charged with 93 counts of blasphemy and sentenced to a year in prison, serving his full sentence. According to musician and Panitza's friends Hans Richard Weinhoppel, a.k.a. Hannes Ruch, Panitza was devastated upon his return from prison. To quote, The thinker had become a brooder, the knower had turned into a doubter, the laughing man was replaced by a grinning one. Panitza returned to work, but was not as productive as, as before. He eventually began writing poems uh, that insulted Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany, which resulted in the confiscation of his trust fund, imprisonment, and the subsequent dropping of all charges of Les Imagestes due to paranoia and insanity, diagnosed by doctors following the request from the court. Finally, Panitza was incarcerated in an insane asylum following a suicide attempt and his walking down the street wearing nothing but his underwear. He stayed at an insane asylum for the remainder of his life. Only in 1920, more than 20 years after the publication of both of these collections, uh, and 16 years after Panisa's incarceration in an asylum, did his mother finally agree, after repeated requests, to allow a republication of her son's work, which was compiled and published by Hans Heinz Evers under the, under the uh, title combining the uh, the names of both collections, Vision der Dämmerung. This collection, however, drops the mentioned Fabrique, but adds one new story, Das Verbrechen in Tavistock Square, where not really much happens, but it's basically uh, chronicles how an overly sensitive police officer has a breakdown when he thinks he sees roses in the park having sex. Panitza died of a heart attack shortly after the publication of this collection, his unfinished books that he was working on, and most of what he left behind as a writer being apparently destroyed by his family, who do not even want to provide a gravestone for his grave. <laughs>